Welcome, welcome to Unseen Sports TV with us, Coach Parchment. Today, we have somebody special in our boot camp over there. Omar Stennett, a.k.a. Manning's Man. Yes, people. KLAS Sports Show Talk of the Year. No other than Omar Stennett, Prairie Academy President. Yes, man of God. Welcome, sir, Omar Stennett. Thank you, sir. Coach Parchment, Unseen <laughs> Sport. Big up on the work, you know? Big up, um, big up. Yeah, man. Keep the, keep the thing going. Yes, man. So some people would ask, what bring you in, 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 into football as a, as, a, as, a, as a man of God? <laughs> well, you know, actually, I, I started playing football before I got converted to Christianity, you know, playing. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I lived in Westmoreland, went to Manning's High School, and I mean played with the football team all the way up to fifth farm before I moved um, back to Kingston, you know, played under 12 for Westmoreland, lived at those times they used to have even some camp. I don't know if they still do, you know, the parishes would, would, would come into the stadium and they play parish competitions. All the teams from outside of Kingston and St. Andrew would live between the national stadium and the arena. I don't know if people know that, but back in those days, we used to sleep over by the arena and, and bunk beds and go in the stadium and play games. Right, so, right. You know, um, my first coach, like first major, major coach, or big coach was Wendell Downswell. I still believe he's one of the, the big coaches in Jamaica. So big he kind of... Farmer's yeah, test coach. There you go, there you go. Right. So he had me um, in those early years. I mean, learned a lot from him. Then in high school at Manning, did well, played at every level from under 12, under 14, um, the Costa Cup, everything, you know. Um, used to play primarily centre forward during that time, yeah. And um, Everton Tomlinson was was my coach there, and Dave Scott. Everton Tomlinson, I think, had a greater impact. Um, very, very good coach. One of the one of the better coaches, I think, down in Western Jamaica. I think he's the president of the Westmoreland Football Association. Came to Constant Spring. Yes. Came came to Kingston. Um, went to Constant Spring. Um, you know, at that time, Lulu was. Coach Bender was up there. Um, Clive Marshall was the, 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 the leader of that team. That team had some very good players. You know, you had like um, O'Neill Morrison, they call him Skillo, Marlon Jackson, Colin Bonder, who was at St. George's, Omar Mafood from Stats, you have Dino. Um, the, you, had, you had Claude Davis. Claude Davis was actually there. Ryan Nelson was a part of that under 20. They call him Bumpy. Don't know if you know them, man. The big forward yeah, yeah. played for Jamaica. These guys were all a part of the same under 20 team. Um, I mean, played against like Jeremy and Johnson uh, because he was playing for Tivoli at the time. Little okay. Bibi, those guys were at Harborview and things. So played a lot of football and you Daniel, know. Daniel was the was the president at the time. At right, Kansas. he was right. He was the president. The senior you know, team at that time. Had, you know, Daniel had... run me off for the field one day. Run me <laughs> <off> the <place. laughs> really? Yeah, as a boy going Kansas Spring Primary, run me down and run me off for the field. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah man. Memories. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. time the team was very good because you had like the Dean Sewell, you had Trevor Lam, you have, you have all of these guys were in teams and we were part of the under 20 crap under Coach Bender. I mean, yeah. had a lot of success, you know. I mean, really, really, yeah. But yeah, you're, you're doing school, college and all of them things and you're struggling. So you start hustling the football. So we start playing more corner leagues. We used to leave from Kingston uh, with a lot of people, go to Westmoreland to play a, a league called the Pot and Goal League. Put on by Richie <laughs> Stevenson, make some money. You come yes. back up, you go by, I think, Lawrence Tavern and play for your team name, Long Hill. Long Hill. Long Hill. Yeah, you make yeah. some money. You get a look of money right there. You go a barbecue and go play some league. You make a look of money. So, everywhere the little corner leagues were, we're trying to do that so we could send ourselves. Make some money, make some revenue. Yeah, yeah, money. yeah, yeah. So, 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 Omar, um, tell us about your academy, Prairie Academy, and oh. Did you start and stuff like that? Yeah, you know, I mean, so, you know, we, we, we got educated and we decided that if, if we're here, why not help some people? Why why not? You know, so you see youngsters and you feel like, my God. I mean, so this time I'm a Christian now, you want to give back to the community you want to help. And too far away from Whitehall or from Casa of a Peace, too far from Westmoreland. You live in a center and why not find some youngsters? So found some, found some youngsters, um, guys who could play football, but never had, because the main team in the community where I was, was Volvo. 
And a lot right. of these guys felt like because they were in the community, they could not play for Volvo. Right? That was not the case, but the Volvo team was a good team and they didn't have the quality. So I decided, all right, why not take some of my personal resources and invest in them because people invested in me. And so I just took them. Um, a group of them had a terrible first season. I mean, had people who were fishermen and all of them things. They just come in because we're trying to help people. And then from that, it evolved into, into a place where we, we started playing Super League. That, right. that team started and we got to the place where we started having players playing Super League. We started helping players to know to go to, you know, to go to high schools, help them with their education, help players to do that, help players to go overseas to further their footballing career, but also to, to, to just work out educationally. If we saw a school that would cater for all of their needs, we'd look to move them um, to that school from the school down here if we never felt like it provided them with the best opportunity. Uh, so, a lot of guys we work with. Um, uh, we had a Jason Lecky as a part of our team. He was a part of that Dintil team that went to the final of the Dacosta Cup. Alwyn Harvey, who is now at Mount Pleasant. Uh, right. Ricardo, Ricardo Richards, who won the, the Dacosta Cup with Clarendon College. Anton Rule, who was at Dintil, played for us. So, we have had um, several good youngsters. I mean, many more. I mean, that have passed through the club. Um, and, and done well. We had um, Hezran Barry, who played for JC, um, Kashi and Constantine, who, who won the Costa Cup with Stets. A lot of these guys have worked with over the years, you know, and yeah, just helping people, man. Right. So it, 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 you have done a lot of work um, up by sentence there. Yeah. Um, could you tell us when, 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 when Mount Pleasant came in, how difficult it was to, 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 to keep those? um talent that you had all right i think the good thing there is there is there is good in everything all right i think what mount pleasant has done is really a good thing for football generally because right. everybody can the truth is everybody can't play for mount pleasant you know that's true <laughs> yeah, that, that is the truth right. and and if a person is going to invest money he's going to look for the highest talent right. and this is something i learned from craig butler um a lot of people stuck with me because I was loyal to them and they right. became loyal to me because people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and that's something that we know in our academy so the guys that I've had some of them would rather not play football than not play for me that that's how it is because I was more concerned about your overall development right. more so because I never saw and I said it to them listen football right now isn't viable enough for you as a youngster so what right. I want to do is to let the football be a platform for you to, to do better. So we'd help them to get jobs, help them to go back to school. So even when Mount Pleasant came in, we never struggled with losing players. I had, had um, a couple of youngsters that I used to work with, and some of them um, became part of the academy. The first team that they had that went up to the CONCACAF, um, I think under 13 championship. Right. Some of those guys on that team I used to work with on Saturday mornings stuff but it worked out for them and um uh, recently i had like a alway and harvey was a part of my team who, who who was called up for the jamaica under 23 who is at mount pleasant right now um and playing well so i i, I would say that mount pleasant coming into the league made more money coming to the league that mean with winning i had more resources to work with and if i sold them a player they they, they would pay whatever the mm -hmm. highest amount is so there, right. you understand me? So there, there are benefits, and they can't use everybody. That's and that, true. that is just the truth. Yeah. But that's, that's true, something that's I learned true. in code. One of the things about football, and I want, I want like people like you who are starting academy. And I learn, like Craig Butler says this. Every time you talk to me, he says it. My players are very loyal. I teach my players loyalty. In other words, you can approach one of his players and try to pull him to your club. Because right. they have become loyal to the to, to the to the to the club, to the to culture, the program. Club, to the program, and that's what you have to develop with the youngsters. If you don't have that, this is part of this, this, the problem with the school system. You'll have a guy from first form, you're helping him, and fifth form, him just leave and gone to a next school. He don't even speak to you because they're the <laughs> kids. The kids are not being taught loyalty. Right. And I think I think as coaches and managers of players, it's very important 
for the overall development of players that we begin to instill them that sense of loyalty right so um omar yeah. what do you think is causing um jamaica grassroots football to like it's it, it, it is not at the right level in terms of the overseas you know or overseas grassroots structure is it is is yeah. so um what do you think we should do to improve it and stuff like that all right, so let me give you an example all right, all right so having been overseas and work with a lot of coaches over there who come into jamaica and stuff um and help to bring people overseas i, I do right. a lot of that with groups all right when when you go to an academy so like on a saturday morning like like if i'm in if i'm in dallas in mansfield like you go to the, on a saturday morning when you go out you have like five fields that divide up the fields and you have like five games going on all these kids come out you have hundreds of kids and your coaches playing games and at that point the objective is not really to win it is to develop your technical skills your tactical skills and good surfaces but here's a big thing those parents pay tons of money for their kids to be in the academy in jamaica it's the other way around when you want a youngster in Jamaica to pay for you, it basically you have to be giving him money. That, in, in other words, there has to be a shift where if you begin your academy, parents need to know that this is a viable option for their child and therefore they have to see it as an investment and pay you for what you're doing. It's reverse. And so if you, if you are not being paid for what you do, where are you going to find the resources to do all that you need to do? Where are you going to find it? Because we don't have it. Our personal resources are not adequate to provide all the things we need to develop footballers individually. And that is one of the major stumbling blocks. We have to, we have to make football be seen as a business from the, from the parental level. In other words, a man need to know that your child can be the next Messi. Start sending him to a good academy and pay the person $5,000 a week. To develop his talent. Her child can become a next Leon Bailey or you know, next Walter Boy. Walter Boy yeah. on the good side, not the bad side of Walter Boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's one of the things. But go ahead. You understand? So basically, I think the parents they don't they, 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 they don't love the sport. They don't love sports neither. The only time we see a parents really put them effort in a child is this them just the child was basically born with the talent or them not nothing else but sports and we can't talk about experience here you go because again we're a third world nation most people have a choice the choice is do i want my child to get a good education or to play because that's the choice i had to face you want to play football the rest of your life or you want Go and get a good job, get a good education, get a good job so you can put money in your pocket. Because football was not a viable option. And that is how it is communicated to most parents. That is why they are not going to do it. So we now have to have to set the thing so organized that, like I said, you run an academy. When a child wants to register for your academy, they know that there is a fee to be paid because you're leading them to a certain level of success. All right, so when a child come to play for your academy, you don't provide his football boots. The only thing the coaches provide overseas is jerseys. And some of them even ask the parents to purchase the jerseys. That's part of your uh, registration or affiliation fee with the academy. It's not like that in Jamaica, right? The other part of it is, is just coaching, I think, expanding or coaching and i think colleges like gc foster is doing a lot of that right back in the days if you used to play football in my time man used to run around man i do a 10 lap 20 lap round field that's not a part of football anymore no yet yet you have never seen the training of manchester city and see them doing a 20 lap round football field true 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 uh man is man true 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 because i learned that um while doing fitness coach at charlie mount high school right remember when they leave when they leave um college and they leave high school they used to the what the whole lap thing around the place and you run miles and stuff 
when me go to Charlie Mount High School now, I started with some research. I'm finding out drills and different drills that enhance the anaerobic and aerobic. We don't necessarily mean you have to run no, 5K and a 10K. You understand me? So coaching education is very important from the, from the, from the, from the grassroots level. Yeah, very yeah. important. Because, like, and, and this is something that I think people need to know, that everything that you used to do around the field, you can still achieve doing drills that build other things. In other words, instead of doing 10 laps around the field, you could be teaching a youngster how to control and pass while getting fit or, having, or being physically conditioned. So the conditioning of players has changed. It, it also includes nutrition, all right? How do we um, develop our players nutritionally in a good way? Not because, because that, is, that is so important. People wonder, how can a Messi stay so healthy for so long? Part of it has to do with his diet. What the man eat? It, these things, and, and so I think coaching, just educating our coaches. And I think the GFF is doing some of these things. You now I know that they are trying to get um, coaches with the CONCACAF B license, which means that you can now be coach, be, be qualify in Jamaica, get your license in Jamaica, and you can coach anywhere in CONCACAF. That means you're going to have to learn different cultures, different, you're going to have to now learn that the, right, the, right. Yeah, the, the Trinidadians' um, lifestyle and style of play is different from Jamaica. So if you're going to coach in a high school over there, what are the different dynamics? And I think that is where we need to change our whole coaching, education, and, and culture. Like, like this, you have to sit down with players, deal with their mental health the emotional balance of your players. So these are the things, because you have a youngster coming to train with you on a Saturday morning, and him don't have no breakfast. And then you're having him, yeah, like. Problem, 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 big, big problem. Big, big problem. Yeah. And then now, you look at the high school system, the high school system cannot develop um, professional athletes. And you have to look at the age as well. When they reach 15 and 17, it, those are professional pro players in some of the big clubs. You understand? So when we have um, athletes at that age and they are playing good football, right? And you have one coach I work with 24 men. You have to cook breakfast to them, um, dinner for them. Them development, there's no development for them to take them this level go, going up this side. They just stay right here, so... You understand yeah. me? So the grassroots is um need to need to improve. Yeah. Um Omar is telling. You're so right now because watch this. You know that most coaches in Jam Jamaica, if they feed in the, the, the ballers, they feed them all the same thing. So if you are if you are six five, 180 pounds, and I am five two, 90 pounds, you are on the same diet as me. And, and they expect the same output. Like, we want people to hear these things because we have to change a lot of things if we're going to get football right at the grassroots level. Then what is the purpose of high school football? Is it to develop players or to bring glory to the school? It is to bring glory to the school. Most of it is to bring glory to the school. And in some of that, you, you, you may help a one and two player. But my philosophy is this. You see, if you're 16 and you're a star, you cannot continue in high school football because you will be stifled, right? If, if you're 16 and you, you, you're at a Charlie Mount and you're going to go up against, maybe Charlie Mount now has six farms. I don't know because some of the schools don't have six farms. Right? Yeah, they, have all six the farm. they have six farms. Okay. Farm. Yeah, but not all the schools have six farms. So when a school without six farms goes to play against, uh, uh, say, one of the traditional schools, say a Jamaica college, that can have a, a footballer who is 19 years old and then they play against a school that doesn't have a six form. And let me use a school down this side, a school called Iona that don't have a school, not a big football in school, but they, they, they stop at fifth form. So that means that child at Iona will not be older than around 17 years old. Playing against a 19, that's, that's a two year gap. So when that 19 year old scored 10 goals, is he really good? 
Well, well, yes, you know, because if you look at it, you know, in the in the in the, in the Premier League, you have players who are 17 scoring um against the, the bigger boys. You understand me? True. True. So the, the age to me, those because once you're a baller, you're a baller, you can't play against anybody. To well, me, the truth the when you reach that yeah. level. But my, my point is that I'd rather see a 19-year-old playing in the restaurant Premier League to see how good he is. Because if he wants to be a professional footballer, I can't measure him based on his dominance at 19 playing against 16-year-olds. I want to measure him at how good he is, even if he's not at his absolute best, but how good he is against his peers are older. That's all I'm saying. Because But yeah. but but Omar. Even if you send them to the Premier League out here to play, right? Well, you, you may not see their um the, the, the talent come out because it's so scary to watch. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. That 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 is a Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, man, yeah, man. But you're right. I agree. I agree with that. You know, there is. Oh, oh, and you're right because then our football exactly is so scary because I think I said it previously because sometimes and this is why coaching education is important and so all of us must be a part of the process. You can't have one set of coaches telling some footballers that bossman lays <laughs> while you telling your players to just oh, seamless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know you know how that right but but you have coaches who who coach that 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 aggressive do whatever you need to do even if the player gets injured and and that can't be because all the youngsters are ours and at the end of the day it's jamaica's football not my school not my club it's jamaica's football also, uh, the referees, the referees are letting these um tackles go in scratch free, not even a yellow card. Yeah, you understand me. And I think the referees have a lot to do with it also because I don't know if they're afraid or something after the match done. If them like if them give somebody a card or something, you understand me. But some crew and sometimes wonder all oh, these players, Jamaica really tough, you know, Jamaica, all them the match up there, eh? yeah, yeah, and it's over. And overseas, yes. once him touch a man, him gone down. Yeah, really but, yes. you know what? <laughs> but a proper coach will tell you if you have to, if you have to slide tackle, if you have to rush in, something is wrong with your game. You you watch the Premier League. How how many how, how many players you'd say in the Premier League? These guys tackle a whole lot in a defense. Check the defenders in the Premier League. The centre backs. How often? Do you see John Stone slide and tackling in the Premier League or a Ruben Diaz or a Van Dyke? These guys, it, it's, it's their positioning. It is your understanding of the game. It is what, the, in other words, your defensive midfielder, your, deep, your midfield does so much of the work. It leaves your center back. As I'm saying, the whole, the whole coaching of football is evolving. And we right. are, we need to evolve faster than we are as a footballing nation right yeah because when the dynamics are changing 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 yeah man all right so um the national senior team selection they selected couple couple youngsters um some some players who are english english born some some of them are english born players um couple local players and stuff um do you think that those players are the right you know blend for it for, for us to go to the world cup and um win the world cup <laughs> I, I i uh let me see i have my challenges with some of the selections um from some of the i believe like i don't i don't know what the coach has seen i believe that some of the players that are selected like the, the let me say the jamaican born players let me put it that way um are not the best players in their positions. The last time I saw the Premier League or the last time I saw them in, in any league at all. When I saw them in, in the leagues that they played in at no time, they were the best. 
are playing the best in their position. All right. So I'm not, I don't know what has been seen. For example, let me give you an example. There's a, a young son named Jashan Anglin. Um, maybe he's a very good, talented footballer. But in the Premier League, in his position, I don't believe he was the best in his position. When he, in fact, when he was at KC, it was a it was a guy called Atkinson. I think his name was Dwayne Atkinson. I think he's at Cavaliers now. Who was a standout midfielder, and Dwayne Atkinson is actually younger than Josh, Josh, Joshan Anglin. So I am saying that even in high school, he wasn't the standout player on his team. All right, but he gets called. So maybe the philosophy of a coach is probably what determines. The selection of players. I think I think I think there's a there's a there's a barrier, there's something that is causing the transition. I don't know it maybe because of JFF and their type of selection. When I have an under 20 under 20 team or under 23 team playing well, and those players, you know, actually beat Mexico with Maggie. We are those players now. Or are they not um being selected in the national team not even you don't have to play them you know but gather them around to train with these overseas players so they can develop that professionalism and get some knowledge about the game that they don't have europe knowledge you understand me so i think there is a big problem there with um the head coach assistant coach jff um jamaica football team there and down at the the, 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 uh, the youth level there's a big problem there and i think that needs to fix what's what what you see on that I think that's a very valid point. Like I said, that, that under 20 team did so well. Um, were, have those players. I think Nikki Daly was in that side. Javon Topi was in that side. All of these guys. I mean, are we to believe that they have not transitioned well enough? And who is responsible for that? Somebody yeah. has to take the blame. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think the players um, just drop. The level, the level, the level of playing, the level of performance of drops of bluff, so they can't transition over. You understand? I think there is a problem with, you know, up there. I don't want to say it, <laughs> but there's a problem up there. Let me give you a good example. Christian Pulisic, right? You know that Christian Pulisic and Alex Marshall played in the same under-17 tournament, and Alex Marshall was a standout player in the tournament. And he should have gone to Germany. I don't know if you remember that. But I think he stayed back and went to St. George's. And, and Christian Pulisic is worth probably 80 million. Alex Marshall right now. Christian Pulisic is one of the stars in the American team. Uh, Christian, uh, Alex Marshall don't even get called to his national team. What? What? What is the problem? <laughs> We will have asked ask ourselves what's the problem. Yeah. yeah. There's a big problem. Um, <laughs> the Jamaican team match cancelled the other day against um, Japan. Um, what went wrong, Omar Stenet? I think you, you know, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball to look into it and see. But <laughs> suffice to say, the, I know that the Japan Football Association offered an apology um to the jff um so they took some responsibility apparently and because remember it is pre-boarding from co i think um from in, in 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 the netherlands which means that something stopped them from boarding the flight so it wasn't in japan that the problem was it was a flight that would have gone to japan so that is saying that the airlines had a different requirement based on what was happening in Japan that was not communicated, I believe, to the GFF clearly. So that is why Japan apologized. Because I think if that was not the case, the GFF would have to pay some money if it were their fault. So basically, uh, you have a certain amount of player from England that is leaving England to Japan, and you have a right. certain amount of player leaving from USA to Japan. So it's right. different flight um, route. Dif different, different, exactly, different. Okay. And, and then because of that, no, remember, remember, if you're, because it was really the kind of test 
Uh, all right, because what they want was, a, I think, the, the, the PCR. So what that means is that if, if I do a test and I'm not told which test to do, I'm just doing a test. So you turn up and they say, well, this is not the test that is, is required, right? No, it is just by chance that the players who, who left like from Jamaica and the, and the delegation of the GFF, did the test because that is the one that is available in Jamaica. So it's not like they knew that this was a test. It just by it because the entire team, you know, could have been could have been could have been denied access because of this and stuff. So um it, it has some embarrassment, but I think now when they come back to Jamaica, all of this need to be said and and explained to the people fulsome so we can understand because these Issues of incompetencies have been plaguing the GFF for a while. Um, I think they will tell tell the people because their system has changed a little. They are more, you know, social socializing with with, with, with the fans now. You know, Earl Bailey is doing yeah. a wonderful guy, job in that position right now. Um, so I think he, they they will tell us what really transpired um, with that. Um, let us analyze. The the, the 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 Champions League final, Omar Stenny. Um, yeah, man. Chelsea won the game one low. Um, how did you think Thomas Tuchel, you know, with a tactical mind game, you know, managed to overpower the big bad pet Guardiola? Yeah, you know that on my on my on my on my channel and, and I am sure sports, I did say that I expect Chelsea to finish second in the Premier League when Tuchel took over because I believe like right now he's one of the better tactical managers out there. He's very good tactically from his time at Mainz and Dortmund and PSG. He did not lose that final because he failed tactically, but there was obviously some conflict in that uh, PSG team in the last one that he lost. And he still won, he still won the, the league and he did well. So when he came to Chelsea, I know that this was a guy who, who I think the game before this that he and Pep played when he was at Dortmund, it was a nil-all tie and they went into penalty. So, so he suffered some heavy defeats. I think one at Mainz, one at Dortmund, but, but he did well to the back end of his career. All right. So the, this, this is the third game and the, and the first two games Pep lost playing some of these guys. And I think he was trying to to fool Chelsea and end up being the fool. I think he was just trying to call. It must be, you know, sometimes in the art of war, you, you cause confusion. You try to create confusion in the mind of your opponent and thing. Because Pep, he had a team that has won up, up to the point of the game, you know. Because we have to assume that the last game that they won, they were just resting players for the Champions League, right? The last game in the league against Everton, it's obvious that he was resting player for the Champions League. So let's forget about that. All right, if you look back, the team has always played with Foden on the left, De Bruyne as in false nine, Mares on the right, Gundogan, um, Bernardo Silva, Ari, Ari, and then he uses Rodri or... or um, Fernandino, right? This game, what did the man do? Because Tuchel didn't change anything, you know. Tuchel played the same way, his regular team. Nothing really changed. This is how he has been played. So he changed nothing. Pep, watch this. In, 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 in removing Rodri and, and our, our Fernandino, Isaac, here's what he did. You changed the role of Gundogan, you changed the role of Kevin De Bruyne, you change the role of Bernardo Silva, you change the role of Phil Foden. He made one change and changed four roles. That is what caused the game. What do I mean by that? No, Gundogan had to be sitting back deeper, needed help from Fernandino to come and help him, which means Kevin De Bruyne can be a false knight. You start Sterling, which means no Foden. That's a next. What Foden going to do? Where is he? Where, I need somebody to tell me. Where was Phil Foden playing? 
Cho, Cho, good question. Where was he? Where was he in the game? Yeah, like <laughs> what, what was his position? Think about it. What was Phil Foden's position? Ah, uh, I'm more likely you, he, he's the person playing the Fast Nine role. Really? So what was <laughs> De Bruyne? What was De Bruyne playing? Well, more more while De, Bruyne, De Bruyne is deep trying to get the ball to carry it up, carry it up, um, distribute <laughs> it to the wingers. See, you see, even if you try to logically think it out, it don't make any sense. It, right. And, and, I, and I think that that cost them the game. It it so I would say Tuchel is tactical, but I think it was Pep was very naive. No, no, I don't look at it like that, you know. Um, all of all of Man City players are quality, world class quality players. All right. You have Foden who scored a lot of goals. You have De Bruyne now is one of the best midfielders in, in the world right now. Right? But I think Tuchel changed the mindset of the Chelsea players in terms of um, Rhys James and Chilwell. I think he told those um, wingbacks that their primary role or the most important role is to defend more than attack. Right? Remember, most of the goals that Sterling score or Mari score is when they have space to run at the defender. And if you look at the game, they, they didn't get any space from James. Now, Chilwell, as Mari get the ball, he, he has to turn and try to protect the ball. He, he can't run to the, to the byline and square the ball or try his skills to cut inside or something. And same on the other side with um, um, James and, and, and Sterling. You understand? You can, if you, if, you, if you go and look at the game now, See how many how many tackles James win in the game and how many tackles um Chilwell won over Mars. The, the the wing box won almost every duels. But Chelsea. Yeah, but I, I agree with you, you know. I agree with you that they were very good. Well, let me say this way, they were very good defensively. But Sterling should not have started. And I think that should have changed the dynamics. Let me say this who, as well. Who, who 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 was the better person to start over Sterling at that position? Phil Foden. Over, over there, by... because he doesn't use pace to get past you, he cuts inside and outside. Sterling and Reese are the same pace. Sterling uses a lot of pace. I think it's one time he get behind Reese James. I am saying even on the side that Mares was, what Bernardo Silva? If Bernardo Silva had a freer role, or Kevin De Bruyne had a freer role in terms of attacking. I think it have put more pressure because they could have doubled up on either side of the field. They couldn't do that because you know that even Chilwell, Chilwell had the more the most squares in the game and you know, the crosses in the game, you know, Chilwell enough. You know. So he was still going forward. In fact, he should have scored. Chilwell, Chilwell going forward because Kante was doing most of his work for him. Remember, Kante and Georgina played double D. Right. Right. And then I don't know about Kante, I don't know how him do it, but he's like two persons playing on the field. And I think Pep Guardiola underestimated Kante. He yeah. thought that De Bruyne will get the best of him or Foden will get the best of him. You understand? You have to double and Kante to, 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 to damage him. You have to double. You have to have two quality attacking players who can, you know, move the ball around him as quick as possible or draw him out. Of his um his ear at his comfortable defending. At them do it one time at the game and him almost score. Them draw out Kante and a ball go them go direct to the middle. Do you remember it? Yeah man. Right? So yeah, and I'll, I'll say this. Listen, the one player city had had problems all season. The position defensively that they have made the most changes is where the goals were scored from. Z Zivchenko. Tingir got on the inside of him. They had to be changing Zivchenko and Mendy, and he used all different kind of people over there. He played three at the back because they're the is it the left side of their defense has been a problem all season long. And I think it ended up causing him the Champions League. I don't know yeah. that they have any who they have left. They don't have any left back at City. Zivchenko not good and Mendy not good. Who else is there? I think they usually use um him name again. The other can cancellor them use. Cancellor play for Walker. Play on the oh. right. I don't know what them use, but they always have problems. But Zivchenko was he, playing good. Well, leading but but he, he his problem is always 
where the four words always get on the inside of him. Okay. And that's but, what happened, you know. But, what but, you, but, you saw the goal was scored? It was an in... Mm. You have to look at this, you know. Remember, Ruben Diaz made a bad decision. True. Right? Because me as a centre-back, me and Red Werner, you know, because I run out at 90%. But a hundred percent, if we're not get a chance, he may miss. miss it. <laughs> he may miss. So me have a decision now. Zone him and stay in the space where we can defend the ball or go with him. But we're not smart. We're not just run out. So automatically, him not thinking. You know, him gone. Ruben Diaz gone with Werner. So Avert just slip through a month for the pass. Uh, more than one time that in um Mount practice this. Mm -hmm. him do it him do it in the game against um the, the, the semi-final with same man city when you yeah. play the ball to the middle. The semi-final of the FA Cup. Yes. Yeah. Do it that's already. True. That trademark that's pass that. You understand? So I think Ruben Diaz made a um, a bad decision. Me as a defender, I mean no sir Werner. He must go score. Because we already him. <laughs> but yeah, man. That's how it is. I think um, I think this is the Pep's worst Champions League defeat. I think this one gonna hit him the hardest because everybody saw his glaring mistakes tactically. But 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 they dominate the game position position wise. They didn't have um, how many shots they had on goal? Well that's uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but when I understand why why you're, you're preparing a team and you don't want to kick the ball from outside the goal. Outside the 18 yard box. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that they got opportunities to kick it from outside the 18 yard box. I yeah, know. them get opportunities to kick the ball from but they more walk the ball at the goal. I don't know that. I, I, I don't listen, I didn't see City create anything until Aguero came on and I think Kyle Walker um passed a couple of balls diagonally. Outside of that city didn't create anything for real. If enough. you are playing a team that is deep as a coach, right? You're playing a team that is sitting deep and defending. Right, are dropping back and defending square, right? Yeah. Are you not getting any opportunity to get the cross in and score? What option you have else to do to 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 to, to get the opportunity after goal? Kick the ball from outside the 18 yard box. So, the so keeper here's must where, one, you know. Here's where now, like even with the changes, I am thinking because in the Champions League you have five changes. So Kevin De Bruyne had to come off because of injury, and he, he brought on. I think so. He brought on Gabriel Jesus. I think then he took off Bernardo Silva and he brought on Fernandino. And he 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 took off Sterling and brought on Aguero. Those are the three changes. All right. I felt like he could have made more changes. I think I'd go to three. At, I would have gone to three at the back and took off Zivchenko and put on um, Forlan Torres, is the guy's name. Just because you want to add additional pace up front. Like, if you get too low, what, what, what is the matter? And that's part of the problem I have with Pep. I don't think... Him like the Bob Marley, man. Yeah, not only that, I don't think he's going to, like, launch balls and try to... He's not going to do that. He still wants his team to play almost the same way. Because even with the changes, the changes were setting up his team... The same way, it, 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 nothing was changing, and I'm saying that why not? Why not put on Pearl and Torres to go and play up front because you have the changes and play three at the back? What is here to lose? But Omar, you know this is one of the one, one, one of the problem that I, I, I saw with the game also mental mental wise. I think city city, city players were Here's beaten it. mentally, right? Based on the fact that Chelsea won them too much before straight. Yeah, you understand me. And people don't understand that that if you are playing an opponent three times, right, and then beat you two times before, your body automatically start your mental part of your brain start thinking, boy, they're no better than me, you know, but them always are beating me. Why? Yeah. Right? So you start to try to find solutions for this, you overthink and all manner of things, right? Those games, um, Pep Guardiola, you know. Theme thing is him like experiment, right? I think if him did put out the best team and beat us those two games, we could not win the, the Champions League final. 
because we are we are we are so scared to come to the game. We are the mental part of our game. Hi, hundred percent. Hi, that we can beat them. Listen, I, I, I want people talk about Conte, and you're right. You know, let me tell you where I read Tuchel. I want people to go and watch it because people saw so much of Conte that they never picked up on Georgino position um, in terms of his position on the field. Check his heat map. They couldn't come down the middle because Conte was free to go everywhere that Bruno went. And Jorginho never, he never left out. He never get, he, he was never caught out for the entire game. What, just watch it again or check his heat, his, his heat map. He, he was never caught out of position for the entire right. game. And that gave Conte the liberty to do all that he was doing because he had one more discipline midfielder marshall always stay always stay exactly just watch it the man just like it was just um 10 yards across 10 yards across 10 yards forward 10 yards back that was it it's like him just in this one square and he stayed there for the entire game and then now uh, chelsea could maintain position position of the, the ball in crucial time of the game you know break the momentum yeah. and the players were smart also in terms of creating fouls and holding up the times and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think um, they were just brilliant overall in terms of how they managed the game. I, I think good. I think when Chelsea scored, Pep resigned himself to losing. That's why he never kept on throwing on chase. I think he just felt like it's over, man. We're not getting back. We're not playing good enough to get back in this game. I think he gave up tactically. You gave up, but the, player, the players also. Um, I, I, I don't think you can really blame, 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 blame the coach. You understand me? Because in terms of when you see the, the Man City players, them start play the game and I give us some ball. I say, what's wrong with them? Some ball, yeah. them, some pass, them, I make them kick it out for true, and them look yeah. a simple something. Them attack and kick with the ball. You understand? That's more like nerves. Or you come back to the mental part of the game where them think them lose before the game starts. Because yeah. of the beat where they get earlier. Yeah. And if that boy and him, Werner, did a square him goal, let me get it for us. What is the same name? Wormout or Werner? Wait, Werner. Oh, I thought you said Wormout. No, Werner. If <laughs> Werner was scoring his goal. <laughs> and, yeah. and you know, Werner, Werner is a quality yeah. player. You know, really? Uh, in terms of creating <laughs> opportunity. Uh, I, I, well, I, the verdict is out on that quality player thing. Huh? Um, the, the verdict is out and done. Let's give him one more season and see. I am well, not yet. Well, you know, um, people people bash him and say that he come to Chelsea to score goals. But you know, you don't think he's supposed to be bash for this season. Well, bash him. I, I I will bash him, but not to bash him to run him out of my team or throw him away. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. That the verdict is out. Let's see what I I think Tuchel gonna get the best out of him next season. If, and I think he's going to get have a good Euro 2020 campaign. And I think that's going to help him. Uh, I think his confidence in terms of scoring is, is totally gone. What I, what I don't want Chelsea to do is buy an ex-forward. If Chelsea buys an ex-forward, it's not going to be good for him. You know, it, it will be good for him, you know. Really? You know why? You know why? <laughs> you know why? <laughs> Tell me. If him, if them buy a good forward, Right? And that good forward is playing well, scoring some goal. You know, Werner, maybe partner with him or maybe bench. All right? So, he might now look into himself and say, John was star. I really need to improve for my career and for yeah. this club and my fans and family. So, he might go focus now and try to find himself again in that scoring part of regime. You Let's understand me? So, it's have... also good in terms of how him take it or him take it now, it, it, you know, it can be in terms of his brain and his mentality. Or him take it, that will define or decide whether he will come back to his, 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 his I, best. I don't, I, don't, I don't really get involved in blue business, you know. Because <laughs> London is ready, you know. That's where my thing is, you know. So I, I go yeah, but you have to analyze the opponents. You have to analyze the opponents so you can beat them. I beat it. I, I wish I was in the Champions League because I would have won it. Because it's too... <laughs> Two times I beat Chelsea this season, boy. <laughs> you know, Arsenal, man. Arsenal, of course, it was. Jeez, no, yes, London. Yes. We're no, lucky. Huh? We're lucky. We're lucky. We're lucky. 
No, man, no, man, no. You man, guys man. are lucky persons. We're we'll coming back next know, year. I don't know what to do to Chelsea, but we don't always have to meet you. Why? <laughs> We have the no. We right. go back for uh, we go back for uh, Hazard. Hazard come beat you know, again, man. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yes, have, people. Yeah, man. Omar Stenet. Yes, I am sure. Boss, aka Manning's man, on Unseen Sports TV. Yes, we talk a lot about you know the grassroots and things to improve the grassroots. We talk about Jamaica. Um football team we, we touch on some analysis on the, the champions league final yes people i'm a chelsea man so i am happy that that, that we won the championship i'm very proud i want a lot of money after of that game too as well i want some money from just bit so um to chel you're the boss i hope you watch this <laughs> and you know the arsenal we need to start to beat arsenal now so that's your next um objective to chel yes people thank you for tuning in to unseen sports tv Yes, top shell video. Share it. Tell all the people them around that Manning's man was here. Yeah. Um, tune in for our next video next week with Jamaica, former Jamaica assistant coach, Alfredo Manteso. Yes, he went to World Cup with Rene Simois. That, that, that big team that went to 98 World Cup with Whitmore, now, now the coach of Jamaica team. Yes, that person I am going to interview. So tune in for that one. The poster will be out soon. Big up again. I am sure boss man is man. Yeah, man. And I Bless hope you, man. you come back, come back here and do a more more interview. Yeah, man. And you need to come. <laughs> you know that you know that you know that and, and that this is closer than doing this. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't see why why people doing this to get close. I think they will catch the COVID like this, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. That is not doing this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But listen, All we right, need to people. do it. We need to come over, come check out, you know. And please support Unseen Sports, you know. Like, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Smash the like button until you have to change the button, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, people, I'm out. Yeah, out, out, out.